Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to install and use OBS inside of Linux. So in my case, I'm running on Manjaro Linux, though the installation and usage instructions aren't really that wildly different for any other breed of Linux as well. In any case, uh, one of the sites you're probably going to want to check out is obsproject.com download, which will have some of the official information on how to get it working and set up on Linux or other operating systems. But there's also a very good installation guide over at projectobs.com slash en slash download, which I'm going to include the link in the description. So you can kind of see that over here in my web browser. It's got the Manjaro instructions, of course, very simple there, but also for uh, other breeds of Linux like Ubuntu, uh, Fedora Linux, it's all there. Mostly what you need to do is pop in a few terminal commands. So for instance, if you're on Manjaro Linux like I am, that's just going to look like a sudo pacman, which is the package manager in Arch and Manjaro. And then dash s for the install obs studio now obviously i already have it installed and running i'm just kind of going through the motions to show you guys how this would look um so i'm not going to reinstall that i'm just going to hit no on that but basically with the package managers on most types of linux it's an easy install and then you just need to boot the program up and that's where the real setup begins so the first thing you're going to notice in the newer versions of OBS is that there's an auto configuration wizard. Now, I think usually it'll give you the pop up on the first time you use OBS in Linux. Um, but if you have already booted it once or twice, you can get to the auto configuration by going to tools auto configuration wizard, which is currently in its beta version. And this is useful because it can help you automatically figure out the bit rate if you're going to be streaming. That's really important because if your internet speed isn't as fast as it might need to be for, let's say, streaming in 1080p resolution, uh, you don't want to try doing that because your stream will look really bad. So you can optimize for streaming or you can optimize just for recording. Um, I'm going to assume a lot of people want to go ahead and use streaming, so we'll just do that so it can figure out the bit rate. And uh, you can see FPS here. Um, it will say either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible. I would say the only people who really need to stream in 60 FPS are going to be um, basically people who are streaming a game that actually can play in 60 FPS. But if you don't like that or you don't want to actually be putting out that many frames, using 30 is just fine for pretty much all other cases. Um, base canvas resolution, generally you want to set that to the resolution of your monitor. So in my case, that's uh, 1920 pixels by 1080. You can just leave that as use current. Um, and the next thing, it'll allow you to basically set up your streaming key, which most people are going to use Twitch. So you would just get that off of the dashboard in Twitch. And I think you can just click this link to get to that dashboard. You log in, you copy it, you paste it in here. Uh, pretty straightforward. Now we're going to leave estimate bit rate, uh, estimate bit rate with bandwidth test here checked, and we'll just allow it to go ahead and run in the background. Now, if you'd prefer not to use the auto configuration wizard, you can go to speedtest.net and you can get the speed of your internet as it is currently. Um, and the upload speed is what you care about. So here I have a screenshot from when I did this earlier. And you can see here the upload speed was 0.8. 19 megabits per second which is pitiful and that's why i'm changing internet companies today if possible if not then tomorrow um so yeah if, in order to really stream at any kind of reasonable quality you're probably going to need a upload of 15 at the bare minimum but probably 20 25 or 30 would be much more ideal and how you would actually convert this into the bit rate which you put inside of obs is you multiply this number by 70 or 80 percent which would be dot seven or dot eight on a calculator you then convert it from megabits per second to kilobits per second by multiplying it by a thousand because mega is a thousand times kilo okay you know what i did make a slight mistake here you don't actually need to convert it from megabytes into kilobits per second because whenever you do these tests it's already in bits not bytes so just multiply by 70% or 80% and then multiply by 1000 to go from megabits to kilobits per second. So with the auto configuration wizard, it generated video bitrate of 33 for me, which is way, 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 way too low for streaming. Hopefully you see something more in the two, three, four thousand range. 
Um, but in any case, we can go ahead and apply settings here. You can see the output scaled resolution because my bitrate is so bad. It's automatically tried to figure out a scaled down resolution so that it needs to basically push less data through to Twitch in order for the stream to show up. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to stream at the same resolution you're recording at. So next we need to go to file and settings. So in the video tab, if you're just going to be recording to your desktop, you probably want the output scale resolution to be equal to the canvas resolution. Um, and you can change that by clicking on the drop down. So base canvas resolution means the input and then scaled is the output. But if you're going to be streaming and it suggested you to stream at a lower resolution, one thing you can do is if we go over to output tab and we change output mode from simple to advanced on the recording tab here, we can actually rescale the output, which means that when it saves to a file, it'll be using this resolution rather than this output scaled resolution. So in this case, this resolution will go out to Twitch and then this resolution will go to your file. Alternatively, you can just set output scale resolution here to what you want it to be in both cases. Now, unless you're recording or streaming a game at a very high bit rate, uh, you probably want this to be set to 30 for the FPS. 60 FPS, it's only really supported in some games. And if you're screencasting like I am, no one is actually going to be able to tell the difference between 30 and 60 FPS. Um, so generally, I'll leave that as 30 there. Now next for hotkeys, the most important hotkey I find to generally set up is start and stop recording. So I like to set that to control alt r, which you can do by clicking on the box and then putting in that combination at the same time. So control alt r for both stop and start recording is a pretty useful hotkey. And the reason for that is that you won't need to like come down here to the notification icon, right click it and then hit start recording anymore. Uh, you can just use the hotkeys instead. So it might save you a little bit of time and a little bit of control over how your video looks while you're recording it. In any case, I'll hit apply there. So next we can go back to the output tab. And if we did change it to advanced here from simple to advanced, the bit rate here might not match the bit rate we had in the auto configuration. So if it said something else, then make sure the bit rate actually matches what it suggested for you. Now, of course, if you're supposed to have a much higher bit rate, but for some reason the auto configuration wizard was giving you a really low bit rate, like 33, then there may be a problem with your ISP or it could be down for the day, who knows. But in any case, it's saying that basically your current upload speed was really bad and that's why it's giving you such a low bit rate. Either that or your internet connection speed isn't very fast at all and then you need to upgrade. So on the recording tab over here, audio tracks one are going to be checked by default, but we can actually do something very useful for video editing, which is to check multiple audio tracks. Now note, uh, formats like FLDV do not support multiple tracks, so you're going to need to change the recording format from FLV to MP4, MP4 being pretty much the most universally used video format, so that's what I always go with and then have audio track one and two checked. Uh, so with this, we'll be able to put a microphone on one track and your desktop audio, your game audio on another track. Um, rescaling the output, once again, that's up to you. If you need it to be a different resolution on your desktop than what you're putting out to the stream, that can be where you do it. And I think that's all we need from this tab. So I'm just gonna hit play there. So let's move on. So if you didn't use the auto configuration wizard earlier on the stream tab over here, you can put in your stream key, uh, which will be, now once again, you get that off of your Twitch dashboard and a very similar place inside of your YouTube account, if inside of your streaming to YouTube or whatever. Um, you can pick your service from here. There's quite a few, but uh, usually people are doing either Twitch or YouTube. I guess Facebook Live might be popular in some places, but anyway, that's how you select your service and you put your stream key in there. Okay, so now let's hit OK and let's do scene setup. So over here you have scenes, which are basically going to be the series of different components that all get put into one shot. So the scene is basically everything combined that's getting output to your video or your stream. And then the sources are the different items like images, webcams, or um, windows games that are all being part of the larger composition. Now before adding in your sources, you should make sure that everything you need for recording is plugged in. So if you have a microphone, if you have a webcam, 
uh, make sure you go ahead and plug that in before you actually start adding sources so that when you get around to adding them, they will show up in your lists. Now, uh, once you've done that, we can right click on this little bo box area here and go to add. The first thing we will add is going to be either a window capture or a screen capture. So a window capture is where you're capturing one box basically on your screen. So that would be like this OBS window. But contrast to that, the screen is your entire monitor. So that's everything. It would include this notes window. It would include this OBS window. Everything on one monitor is a screen. And one of these boxes known as a window is a window capture. So when you go to add, select the option you want. If you want to capture the full screen, once again, screen capture. If you want to capture a specific window or a game, use window capture. There is no game capture on uh, OBS Linux like there is in Windows. You would just use window capture instead. So here I will add in screen capture. And I'll use an existing screen capture because if you keep adding in the same monitor multiple times, it's a bit redundant. So I'll just select screen capture from the existing list here and pop it in there. And then we can use that as a source. Now, if you have other video sources or images you need to add, like an image could be used for an overlay, which should be set as a PNG image. Um, you can add that in. Video capture device would be used for webcams if you have a webcam you want to show on screen. Although you don't need to add video capture device for webcam if you're only using the microphone from that, uh, only if you want the video really. So once you have all of your video sources done, then what you need to do is go over here to Mic Aux and Desktop Audio. So we're gonna modify the Mic Aux in the mixer. And I'm gonna click on the settings icon in the bottom right of that section. Uh, we'll start with properties. So in properties, the one we wanna select from this list is going to be the microphone that we want to record from. So you can leave it as default, which will be whatever is your system microphone. Um, or you can change it to a manually selected one, like USB audio device here. So I'm going to hit OK there. And if you're talking, you should see the microphone levels show here, obviously. Um, from there, we can also add in filters. So if you want a really basic filter setup, um, typically I put noise suppression to negative 60, which will take some of the background noise and reduce that. And then compressor, which will help even the audio levels of everything you're saying into the microphone. But when you do add in filters like that, you're gonna to want to test them out by going to advanced audio properties. And here you can uh, basically see how it sounds by changing audio monitoring, monitor off to monitor and output, or you can choose monitor only. When you're done monitoring it though, I would recommend you turn it back to monitor off. Uh, you don't want like the audio to be coming through your headphones. If you are currently recording, that would be pretty annoying. Um, now the other thing we need to do here, if you remember from the settings menu, we enabled two audio tracks. What you'll see is that for both desktop audio and your mic, these six tracks are checked in both cases. So you're going to want to uncheck all but one for each of these two audio sources. So mic aux I will leave checked on one and desktop audio I will leave checked on two. All the other boxes are unchecked and what this means is that mic aux will be outputting to track one for audio and desktop audio will be outputting to track two. Now when you do this, do make sure that in the settings menu, um, and I'll go back there really quick here, that you do make sure that those two tracks are both recorded, uh, uh, make sure that those two audio tracks are recorded in the advanced output recording tab. Um, so that you actually record all of the audio and you don't get left with missing audio in your final video. And also make sure that the audio tracks you use do match up, that like you're recording on audio tracks one and two here and down there as well. Uh, you don't want to record to an audio track that's not queued for recording. Uh, so it actually looks like we're pretty much further along with this tutorial than I thought already. So at this point, Really, as long as you've added in all your sources and you've double checked your microphone settings, you've made sure the audio sounds good, then you can just start recording and start streaming. Now, if you want to record to a file, you would hit start recording, which is going to output to a file on your computer. So if we go back over to settings and output, um, I believe it's recording here. You can see the recording path. I did forget to touch on this. Uh, you can browse to a location on your computer where all of your files will output there. So for instance, I have this recordings folder created inside of my home Chris videos uh, directory. 
It's important that you make sure that the folder does actually exist though, because it will not automatically create a folder for you if it doesn't already exist. So make sure it exists before you start recording. Um, if you want to record to that location while you talk, hit start recording. And if you want to stream online to Twitch, then you would hit start streaming. Now, if you want to do both at the same time, you would just hit start recording and start streaming. Obviously, you can use the hotkeys like Control R that I was showing you before, but if you do hotkeys, make sure you have it set up for both start recording and start streaming. But pretty much that's about it for setting up OBS inside of Linux. So I hope you guys were able to follow along with this tutorial. If uh, you were lost on anything or you need more instructions, I'm putting all of uh, basically these notes in the description and hopefully that guide should get you going. So thanks again for watching. I've been Chris and I will see you guys in my future video content.